Order. The National Assembly is in session. <laughs> Item one, questions to the First Minister. Question one, Ellen Jones. of the Welsh language. It's an interesting idea, and we're considering that. As I told the member earlier, there will be a policy statement in the very near future, and the aim of that statement is ensuring that the statement that has, has meat on the bones. Rebecca Evans. Thank you. How is the Welsh Government helping adults who want to learn Welsh We fund a provision of uh, Welsh language for adults throughout Wales. We have invested £9 million annually for the Welsh medium provision for adults and about 18,000 adults attending Welsh language classes across Wales. Uh, this is something that has been considered. Uh, while looking at the policy statement, it's very important to ensure that it's only the mental health that are responsible for the Welsh language in their areas. It's very important that they realise that they have a duty as well to boost the language in their areas, and this will become clearer during the policy statement. Question two, Elinid Parrott. Will the First Minister make a statement on library services across Wales? Yes, our libraries inspire uh, people to enjoy reading, to develop their knowledge and skills and, of course, to enrich their quality of life. Very grateful for that answer, First Minister. You may be aware that Rhondda and Taff uh, Council closed Reed Felin Library in my region ten days ago, and that campaigners have won the right last week to seek a judicial review into the decision, which I congratulate them for. Coming hot on the heels of another community brought uh, judicial review, which found that the authorities cuts to nursery provision were unlawful. Given what you've just said, would you agree with me that it's high time RCT Council stopped spending public money fighting its own communities through the courts and started listening to public opinion on the importance of libraries to them and back down on a decision which is harmful to the community and to the literacy and, com and uh, digital exclusion policies that your own government supports. Well, the member will know that there is a judicial review hearing that will take place on the 18th of June, and so it is unwise for me to comment further. Sandy Mewis. Uh, thank you. I've been a library member for a long, long time, since I was a child, and I still greatly value the fantastic services they provide. On Saturday at Holly Hollywell Library, I was able to borrow my books, buy a hand-painted silk scarf as a gift, a birthday card made by a local craftsperson, and a local photographer's work for myself. So I'm delighted that Flincher is one of the first authorities where children between eight and nine will automatically be given a library card. First Minister... Do you agree with me that this will give children enormous pleasure as they enter the world of books and reading, as well as giving literary skills a boost, and their older siblings and parents will probably find something to please them if the whole family visit? I think that's a fine example of diversification. Libraries, of course, have changed over the years. They were once, of course, places where uh, there were just books on loan and uh, reading rooms for newspapers, if I remember, uh, when I was uh, little, silly in, in, in Bridgen. They have, of course, moved on to uh, be facilities, for example, where people are able to uh, access uh, electronic media, often, of course, people who could not access electronic media uh, otherwise. Uh, and it's a tribute to all those involved in libraries over the years uh, that they have, as it were, moved with the times, keeping their, their core, which is, of course, the lending, physical lending of books, whilst at the same time being able to offer many more services. Gramsci. 
Uh, First Minister, you may well get a silk scarf if you accompany Sandy Mewes to a Flincher library, uh, but if you come to Monmouthshire with me, uh, you will uh, have access to a two-year pilot called Access to Research Programme, a unique collaboration between libraries, which I'm sure you're aware of, and publishers in Monmouthshire, which will allow my constituents to access many of the leading academic papers on science, technology, medicine uh, and other areas uh, from, as you just mentioned, library, computers, one way that libraries are diversifying and some of this material is available for the first time. This is cutting edge freedom of information. Will your government now work with the Publishers Licensing Society to develop this pilot with a view to a wider Wales rollout? Well, it's an interesting project, of course, and I'm sure that the, uh, the Minister will uh, look at the results of that uh, project in order to see uh, whether it can be uh, rolled out across Wales. But it's an example, of course, uh, once again, of libraries offering uh, the services that people need in the 21st uh, century uh, and ensuring that they provide uh, the research capabilities uh, that would be available elsewhere. Roderick Lynn Thomas. Uh, comprehensive services that libraries provide these days for uh, communities uh, that they are an inspiration in your own words and that they also offer very important access to IT which is crucial to many families although they can't access that at home. Do you acknowledge, given the financial pressures that exist and the questions today have confirmed that there is a role here for the Welsh Government to work with local governments to ensure that these crucially important services are sustained in Wales and indeed that they are expanded in terms of the ability to access them? Well, it's important that members know about the new libraries that have been bought, uh, built in their areas, and there's several in my areas, and uh, others, of course, and it's very important that the libraries are considered as buildings hin, for this course, century uh, and uh, vel, um, uh, things uh, like the fact that it's, 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 it's possible now to uh, uh, take, books, uh, take out e-books uh, or borrow e-books. We know, of course, of course that more and more people use electronic equipment to read their books and it's important uh, that libraries uh, can uh, provide uh, service to those people as well and it's good to see that that's happening across Wales. I will now call the party leaders to question the First Minister, starting this week first with the Leader of the Opposition, Andrew R. T. Davis. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer. Uh, First Minister, um, this morning members would have received a statement from you in relation to the uh, letter that has been sent by my colleague Antoinette Sandbach over the conduct of the Minister for Natural Resources and whether there has been a breach of the Ministerial Code. Uh, could you confirm whether the adv your advice was sought as the Ministerial Code sets out by the Minister before he engaged in contact with National Resources Wales on this specific matter? But also the Ministerial Code section 4.4 thereof also says that, that applies particularly to a decision-taking Minister. He is not the decision-taking Minister in this instance. Nevertheless, as the Leader of the Opposition will know, I have asked the Permanent Secretary to produce a report for me on all the circumstances surrounding this issue. I'm grateful for that very specific answer about no advice being sought. I had thought that that in itself was a breach of the code. Uh, I do note that obviously you've adopted a different tack this time round in that when the former education minister uh, was removed from his post because of a supposed breach of the ministerial code, you made the decision yourself. This time you've introduced the, camp, uh, the permanent secretary into the process. Can you tell me what the difference is between this uh, supposed uh, accusation or breach of the code that has been put to you and the last one when the Minister did have to resign for breaching the code? On this occasion I felt it was useful to uh, obtain uh, an objective report before taking a final decision. Given that the letter that you sent out about the Ministerial Code is quite clear on the 4th of July 2011 that says that the Code applies to all Ministers, Deputy Ministers and the Consul General and I expect all to adhere to it if it is the case that the Permanent Secretary does feel that the code has been breached, do you believe that it is a resigning matter for the Minister? A simple yes or no will do in this Well, instance. I'm not prepared to prejudge the issue. I've asked the Permanent Secretary to provide me with a report on the facts. It's for me to decide what I then do, as would be the case, of course, uh, with the Ministerial Code that applies at Westminster. I now call the Leader of Clyde Camry, Leanne Wood. The chair of the government's ICT panel yesterday said, and I quote, if the Welsh economy continues to grow on track, then there will be demand for 18,000 more jobs in ICT. People will come over the bridge to take those jobs. 
Does the First Minister dispute those concerns? Well, it's inevitable that jobs are created that people will move across the UK to fill those jobs. That much is true. Uh, but, of course, a lot of work is being done in FE colleges and indeed in HE to make sure that any potential skills gap in the future is addressed. So, this is not the first time that recommendations have been made to strengthen ICT in education. Last September, the ICT steering group's report to the Welsh Government said that ICT in schools needs to be rebranded, re-engineered and made relevant to now and to the future. Plaid Cymru supports those recommendations. When can we expect the Welsh Government to deliver on those recommendations? We are delivering on those uh, recommendations. and I, I am slightly concerned at the suggestion that, that uh, we are trying to prevent people coming to Wales to take jobs. That, that's the kind of language which I, I think needs to, be, uh, needs to be dealt with very, very carefully. First Minister, I would have thought better of you than to try to twist my words yeah. in that manner. That is not what, what I said. I would, however, welcome the First Minister's broad support for strengthening ITC, uh, ICT skills in education. Plaid Cymru believes that getting these skills right could provide this country with the basis for economic and social renew renewal, and we are very keen to see such progress made. Given the importance of this issue, will the First Minister now distance himself from the backbench member for the Ronda, who last week described such proposals as stupid? Well, I, I see that uh, First Minister's question is once again a constituency question session uh, regarding the, uh, uh, the Ronda. Well, I mean, the, the leader of Plaid Cymru, uh, well, the record will show what she said. I say no more other than to say it's, it's exceptionally important to be careful in the use of language. Uh, and I don't believe that, that as much care as possible was used on that occasion. We are, as a party and as a government, ensuring that people have, uh, whether it's skills they need through Jobs Growth Wales, whether it's the apprenticeship schemes that are open to all ages, whether it's working with FE and HE colleges to make sure that opportunities are indeed available to those who live in Wales to take jobs in Wales, and also, of course, to make sure that where expertise comes into Wales from outside, that we actually welcome that. I call the leader of the Welsh Liberal Democrats, Kirsty Williams. Uh, First Minister, <coughs> given that your office did not approve uh, the contents of the letter written by the Assembly Member for Blind Gwent to Natural Resources Wales, expressing clear personal opinions about the planning application for the Circuit of Wales, when did you become aware of the existence of that letter? I think it was last week. Thank you, Minister. I'm concerned by your answer because, as you will remember, I wrote to you in August of last year asking what safeguards were in place to identify matters which could potentially represent a conflict of interest for a Minister when acting in his or her capacity as an Assembly member. Uh, in reply to my letter uh, a month later, you told me that ministers, private officers and relevant AM support staff are all well aware of the need to identify matters which could potentially represent a conflict of interest and, if necessary, refer the matter to a senior official or to my office for resolution. Uh, did the Minister for Natural Resources uh, refer himself to a senior official or to your office to seek advice on this potential conflict of interest? No. But I come back to the point I made earlier, which is that Section 4.4 of the Ministerial Code deals with that issue in the context of a minister who might be asked to take a particular decision. Uh, and so it is unclear. Uh, on that basis, then, that's why I've asked the Permanent Secretary to provide me with a report in order that I may have uh, all the facts uh, that I need in order to assess the situation properly. But, First Minister, in your letter to me of the 2nd of September, you clearly make the distinction between where a minister has to take a decision and there is no question here the Minister for Natural Resources does not have to take a decision, and where potentially there is a conflict between a minister and their assembly, and their assembly member responsibilities. You clearly make the distinction in your letter, and you clearly set out what you say are your expectations. Given that the investigation you've asked the Permanent Secretary to now carry out potentially involves you and your office, and whether you took the action that you assured me in your letter would be taken in these circumstances, is it not now time to admit that we need independent scrutiny of the ministerial code? You, First Minister, will be the sole decider on whether you and your ministers have stuck to the rules. How are the public ever expected to have faith 
when you play the role of judge, jury and potentially the executioner? Well, that, that is the exact system that exists in Westminster and indeed in the rest of the UK as far as I'm aware. It is a matter, it's true, in Westminster, we, we looked at this this morning, the final arbiter is the Prime Minister at Westminster. That is it, that's what the Ministerial Code says. Uh, I have uh, the ability to appoint uh, or indeed to remove ministers. It is my responsibility to ensure the Ministerial Code is adhered to. Nevertheless, I take the view that in these circumstances it's important that there is an independent and objective presentation of the facts to me in order for me to take that decision and then of course it is for me to decide what happens next and then I am answerable of course ultimately to the people of Wales uh, and that is exactly the same situation that exists at Westminster the, the Prime Minister is the final arbiter. Question three, Mike Hedges. Thank you uh, Deputy Planning Officer. What recent discussions have the First Minute had with the UK Government regarding the Wales Bill? Well, I have regular discussions with UK Government Ministers on a range of matters, including the financial reform agenda that forms a major part of the Wales Bill. Thank you for that response, First Minister. Although I welcome moves in the Wales Bill to put us on a more equal footing to other devolved legislatures, I cannot understand why the Welsh Government would still be left with less control over borrowing and, and reserves compared to unitary authorities. Does the Minister share, First Minister share my frustration and has he raised this with the Welsh Secretary? Well, yes, there's no reason at all why that should be the case, and members, of course, will have the ability to raise questions with the uh, Secretary of State uh, tomorrow to see whether, uh, in his own words, he continues to receive an easy ride. <laughs> Susie Davis. First Minister, the Wales Bill, once enacted, will be transferring full control of business rates to you. Uh, what are you going to do with those powers that are different from the current regime? Uh, well, that, that gives us full flexibility. The Minister has already uh, put actions in place in order to see how we might use those powers. Members will be aware of the reviews that have, been taken, that have taken place, particularly from uh, Professor Brian Morgan, uh, if I remember, and others. And once those powers are devolved, of course, it will it'll be possible for us to use them as flexibly as possible. Jocelyn Davis. Officer. Uh, First Minister, I'm sure you'd agree that a strong, resilient Wales needs a strong Assembly. Now, do you think that this Wales Bill settles the devolution question, or do you think we will need more Wales Bills in the future? This current Wales Bill? No, clearly not. Uh, there will need to be a further Wales Bill after the next general election in order to deal with the matters that were raised by the second part of the Silk Commission's report. Peter Black. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. First Minister, further to Susie Davis's question, can you outline what pre preparations the Welsh Government is t making to take on the new tax raising powers which will be devolved to us and how you will be, they will be implemented? The work is in hand for the creation of a Welsh Treasury. Uh, there will need to be a Treasury function that we exercise and uh, the Minister has already uh, put in train all the work that needs to be done so that when the powers uh, do arrive here, then they can be taken on uh, and used as quickly as possible. Question four, Janet Finch Saunders. Will the First Minister make a statement on Welsh Government provisions to tackle age discrimination within Wales? Yes, we have a long history of supporting older people through our strategy for older people and of course we uh, were the first country in the UK to recognise age-related hate crime, crime as a significant issue. Thank you First Minister. Last week the charity Prime Cymru warned that unemployed older people in Wales are potentially discriminated against in their search for work, with 214,000 jobless persons between the age of 50 and the state retirement age, compared to 62,000 younger uh, persons without employment. Whilst we welcome the progress that Jobs Growth Wales has had in creating some job opportunities for young people, um, I, I wonder and I ask what advice, uh, what actions your government is taking to help those over 50 back into gainful employment? Yes, well, I, I can say, for example, that we expanded apprenticeships uh, into an all-age programme over a decade ago. Apprenticeship frameworks offer a wide range of skills, whatever the age of the apprentice, and the Level 3 apprenticeships, for example, are particularly attuned to the upskilling needs of adults as they require management skills, something that generally lends itself to a more experienced and mature uh, person. I can also say that higher apprenticeships uh, are often better suited to those aged over 25. They're a new offer within the programme uh, as well. So yes, Jobs Growth Wales is, aim is aimed at a particular age group, but nevertheless there are other schemes that are uh, deliberately aimed at those of any age. Julie Morgan. 
Chief Presiding Officer, I'm sure the First Minister is aware that um, ethnic minority elders are even more likely to suffer discrimination in accessing services, in gaining employment and do suffer from isolation. Would he agree that the Minority Ethnic Elders Advocacy Project, which is due, due to be launched tomorrow in Cardiff, is an excellent way to try to not only help older people, but also to combat the discrimination that does exist, particularly against ethnic minority older people? Yes, older people from ethnic minority communities can face barriers because of their age and also, of course, because of their background. So the project does meet a real need. And I'm pleased that Race Equality First, in partnership with three other equality councils, uh, will be taking forward this uh, national big lottery funded project. Lindsay Whittle. Uh, Deborah Flower, the beauty of being third is all of your questions I've asked before. How active is the Welsh Government in ensuring uh, job advertisements do not restrict employment opportunities to older people, please? Uh, well, I'm not going to say to the member, I refer him to the answer I gave some moments ago. I will try and answer the question. Of course, there are uh, legal requirements with regard to age discrimination in, in job adverts, uh, and we would, of course, expect uh, all job adverts in Wales to meet the fundamental requirements of the law. Question five, Anne Jones. Will the First Minister make a statement on how the Welsh Government maximises opportunities resulting from major sporting events? Yes, our major events and sector business teams work closely with event organisers to identify and exploit opportunities for uh, encouraging new investment and business and, of course, to uh, encourage commercial opportunities. Thank you very much for that. During those discussions, uh, what, what opportunities are there to talk to the uh, train company, Arriva, in, in making sure that they, they have services that are available from people from North Wales to attend? And in particular, the rugby, I think, is one where there's a good following. But also um, football as well, when the, when the Welsh team plays... Uh, the football team plays down in South Wales. Many North Wales fans are unable to attend, especially if it's an evening meeting, due to the fact that they can't get back for the sake of perhaps 10 minutes or a quarter of an hour's delay or, or on the trains. Can, can the Welsh Government talk to the train companies as we approach the next season of the rugby and the football? And should ever Wales qualify for a World Cup? I would, for one, would like to be able to come down to Cardiff and back in a day to support my home nation. Uh, if we do qualify for the World Cup, I suspect we won't be playing the finals in Cardiff, but nevertheless, <laughs> we, 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 can, we can be ambitious about these things. But I take the point. It's an important point. It is an issue not just for those who live in the north, but across the whole of Wales. Uh, some of it is down to the fact that occasionally games are played on Sundays, sometimes late on a Friday night, and that causes problems in terms of transport back. I can say, however, that officials do continue to encourage regular liaison between the rail companies and the Millennium Stadium on transport arrangements, and that does include the involvement of the rail companies servicing uh, the mid and north of our country, and that is dealt with through a standing schedule of regular meetings that, that, is hosted at, that are hosted at the stadium itself. Darren Miller. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. First Minister, there are some excellent facilities uh, in North Wales, two of which are in my constituency, which are prime examples of places which could host uh, international uh, sporting events, park areas, which of course you have visited and the Welsh Government has invested in, uh, and indeed the Llandegla uh, Forest, which is something of a mountain biking uh, uh, centre and attraction. What work will you do to ensure that those, both of those locations receive the maximum opportunity to market themselves for the international, uh, to the international community for major sporting events to be attracted into my constituency? I think they've been successful already. Park Iris, for example, is yeah. now the natural home of the Wales Under-20s uh, rugby team and well supported when the team <laughs> plays there. And, of course, it uh, hosted the uh, senior international between Japan and Russia recently. Uh, a fine facility, uh, excellent facility in terms of spectators, but also an excellent facility in terms of the, the gym that's there uh, and the facilities for the development of, of players. Uh, and I very much welcome the fact with Park Iris that there is now a proper facility for rugby uh, in the north uh, that uh, can be used. And with Llandegla, we're fortunate in Wales to have Llandegla, to have places like Coy de Brenin, to have Glyncorog, which are now world centres for mountain biking. And increasingly we are being seen as a mountain biking centre and that is something, of course, we will continue to encourage. Cantonev. First Minister, on the subject of major sporting events, uh, you'll be aware for the second year running, Pontypridd RFC uh, have done the double. Will, you, will the First Minister join me in congratulating Pontypridd RFC on their achievement, and will you be going home tonight humming the tune to the words, ole, 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 Ponty, Ponty? Well, I, I, I do congratulate Pontypridd. It's, it's a, it's a marvellous achievement. They've been consistently 
uh, at the top of Welsh Premiership Rugby for, uh, for a few years now, and it's a tribute to those who are involved with the club and the players, uh, of course. I will not, of course, mention the fact that the first time Bonterpreet appeared in the Welsh uh, Cup final, uh, they lost to a team called Bridget. <laughs> Of course, me with their kill flash on Cymru, I were at the air, and Leon had a converting with the Ade, a quarry on a summer than Cymru. I can roof for her dread with the Doki Fire, Bokin Haderis, or Annie Bunyeth, Kavas Natural Cumberland, or your dependence, Queen Donkel, or what Dreffy, by my daughter, depends on the Ade, and when he comes, are Trem, Gunsinio, and Dirum Huli Adiki, where he could hide the Bonham and Alfie Vessel today, suggest that you're not quite so sure now. Is not relevant to this question. I have allowed a lot of uh, leeway for uh, the leaders to question. Uh, question six, Mohammed Ashka. Deputy Presiding Officer, will the First Minister outline the Welsh Government priorities for improving transport in Wales in the next 12 months, please? Yes, the Minister outlined her priorities in her written statement uh, of July of last year. Thank you very much, First Minister. It was reported this year, January, that Welsh Government has plans to fund improvements to the Upper Vale railway lines. In your last administration, your colleague, you know, Deputy First Minister, he promised to put Newport and Upper Vale linkage well before Ryder Cup, which never happened till today. Will the First Minister advise whether these plans include linking Newport to Upper Vale by railway line which would provide significant economic benefits both to Newport and Gwent Valleys. Well, I can say, of course, that Pike Corner Station is due to open in December of this year. That will improve access to Newport. Newport. We are also funding track Railway. works, which will provide the capability to operate additional services, which could operate to either Newport or Cardiff, and those works will be completed uh, in 2016. Rina Will you give a commitment to ensuring the problems such as this don't arise again and provide details on what step exactly the Welsh Government intends to take to prevent this from happening again? Of course, uh, as far as anyone can see, uh, I wouldn't Tom, expect this to happen again, but you have to consider, of course, uh, a patrum uh, or two with, and I'm going to go to the board and ask for yours. Very unfamiliar and unfamiliar, and of course, that's been a challenge to ensure that the floods in particular are resolved as soon as possible. I will ask the Minister to write to you about that with more details. William Powell. Uh, one key component of transport policy and indeed traffic management that's sometimes overlooked is the capacity, First Minister, to deal with major events. And in that uh, context, it was uh, my pleasure uh, on Sunday to attend uh, for the third time the uh, Bob Jones Memorial Air Show at, uh, at uh, Welshpool Airport. And it was a superb event, which uh, it was a great um, credit to, to the organisers, but one uh, thing that did threaten to mar it was the extreme difficulty in terms of uh, traffic management. Uh, in that context, First Minister, what steps uh, would the Welsh Government be prepared to take to ensure that best practice in this important area around uh, major events, such as is already evident in the Royal Welsh Show and the Greenman Festival and other major sporting events, is actually rolled out so as to uh, uh, mitigate this problem in future? It will be a matter to be dealt with, I would suspect, by uh, early meetings between Welsh Government on the Trunk Road, uh, Powys County Council and, of course, uh, David Powys Police with the Royal Welsh. Of course, it's a, it's a long-established event, uh, and so um, the authorities have had a, a lot of practice, if I can put it that way, in making sure the traffic flow uh, works properly, but I encourage there to be early engagement, particularly with the highways authorities and with the police, to make sure that tr the traffic flows as seamlessly as possible. Roberts. First Minister, I want to return to the issue of the U55 because you said that you hope this won't happen again, but of course it did happen again on the 23rd of May. And what I hope you can tell us this afternoon is that it is quite certain that the work that has been completed is not sufficient or inadequate. Will there be funding available within Welsh Government funds to actually do that work? 
Sulu and a gogled board, who had a travel day thing in our head, and the the discussions on the M4 is creating a situation whereby the funds will be spent in South Wales rather than making improvements simultaneously in North Wales, too. Well, no, the improvements in the South are around uh, Newport, and that's very different and because we will need to borrow money to do that. But of course, we will consider what the report says before. I listed it in with top, considering if, uh, again what we uh, and will need to do in order to pimp, bolster pimp, uh, the fine fine problem or live or give. in terms of flooding. Question seven, David Rees. Yeah. Will the First Minister make a statement on the Welsh Government's support for the creative industry sector? Well, it's one of our fastest uh, growing sectors. Uh, we also, of course, the news that Pinewood uh, was uh, coming to Wales. The fact that BBC have taken uh, a decision today with regard to a new headquarters. We have awarded over £9 million of funding for the sector in the last year, helping to create or safeguard over 1,400 jobs. Well, thank you for that answer, First Minister. And as you may know, Da Vinci's Demons is actually about to start filming its third series on the old for a fort site in my constituency. Many people think it's Swansea, but it's actually in Neepert Albert. The decision to return to these studios clearly reflects the great support provided by Neepert Albert Council and the Welsh Government, and I will also add the University of Welsh and St David's who provide the support. But to encourage more productions to come to Wales, it's important to develop a, a greater workforce with the necessary skills and a, of all aspects of the creative, uh, creative industry. So how is the Welsh Government working with education providers to ensure that these skills are developed here in Wales to provide that workforce? Well, I can say that uh, officials from the ESD creative sector team and uh, DFES are working with the providers and with the industry in order to address the issue of skills. We already have, of course, many skilled professionals in TV and film uh, production, uh, and so uh, work is already ongoing uh, with the education providers to make sure that, that skills gap, uh, should it arise in the future, is addressed. Mark Isherwood. But, uh, in fact, interest in filming in North Wales is increasingly evident. Uh, the Emily Pankhurst story in Rithin, intended Pinewood Ventures into Anglesey, Tarzan starting filming in Clamberis, and Film Wales scouting locations for a National Lottery TV a campaign involving hundreds of thousands of investment. At the same time, there's a creative sector uh, brain drain from the north uh, to the south. Would you, therefore, as First Minister, support um, properly worked up business uh, proposals for the development of a film studio and soundstage in North Wales that could service the opportunity for film and media uh, production uh, and create much needed local jobs? We, we will, of course, uh, examine carefully any potential investment in any part of Wales. Uh, we know, of course, when it comes to creative industries that Carnarvon, for example, has developed as, as a hub. Uh, and there's potential to grow further there as well. We know that there are many locations in the north that are, have great potential when it comes to, uh, to, to filming, uh, but the suggestion the member makes is, is one that we would examine with, with interest if there was such a proposal. Alan Fred-Jones. Thank you very much. The most prominent form of direct support for the creative industry, of course, is the Creative Industries Fund, made available by government. Now, like the Finance Wales, that public money, which is invested in initiatives for projects which are private in nature, will you give us some details on this fund, how many investments have been made, and how many repayments have been received by government for the sake of transparency and open government. I will ask the Minister to write to the member with more details on that. Question 8, Rebecca Evans. Will the First Minister make a statement on energy supply in Wales? Well, Wales meets a significant proportion of UK energy needs through energy generation. Uh, liquefied natural gas imports and fuel refinal capa refining capabilities are also exceptionally important to the UK economy. And we continue to lead the transition to a low carbon energy system. Thank you, First Minister. You've repeatedly made warnings about the spiralling costs of energy and the danger that that presents to the energy industry, energy intensive industries here in Wales. Such can, companies continue to struggle with the costs of, uh, of energy, and that obviously has an impact on their competitiveness. On a scale of 0 to 10, how responsive has the UK government been to heed in your warnings, and what action, if any, have they taken to reduce the cost to Welsh business? Well, I can't give them zero because they have um, sought to address this issue, but I wouldn't give them more than about three. The reason is that whilst we've had the words in the budget that there have been no real actions yet, uh, I, I do have concerns that unless we see action soon from the UK government, we, st we, will st we will start to see job losses in energy-intensive industries in Wales. We can't do anything about this as a devolved government. There is a duty on the UK government to follow through its words now with actions 
Otherwise, we're going to start seeing problems in some of the most important manufacturing industries. Russell George. Uh, given the recent allegations regarding Welsh ministers putting undue pressure on natural resources Wales, can the First Minister confirm that there has been no undue pressure put on natural resources Wales by Welsh Government, by other ministers or officials, regarding the evidence they've presented to the Mid Wales conjoined, conjoined uh, Wind Farm Public Inquiry? No. Clear Griffith. Well, the NFF fund uh, and the fact that we've created a register of benefits or interest, interest which comes under uh, wind development uh, on shore, uh, and therefore we have to vote consider particularly the future uh, if there is uh, more, more development uh, in the uh, natural resources in Wales, Wales, we have to ensure that that energy goes to the people of Wales. And, for example, uh, with the uh, Wales Bill, uh, it will be possible to create new taxes. Uh, for example, if there is any kind of new resource developed in Wales, therefore that will be the time well, to decide whether we need uh, a new tax. Tax to get the benefit from the people of Wales. So the register would be a good start, but there would be uh, possibilities in the future as well. Question 9, Simon Thomas. Well, my friend with the Gwasnaeth Ni Cymraeg Mwyna Geiriau, of course, and I'm an FE The framework is more than words, of course, and that sets out the work that's been taken forward with NHS partners to better meet the work on the needs of those accessing primary care services. Diolch Pryfyn i, Dog. Mae adroddiad y Commission i'r iaith sy'n wedi gohoeddi heddi Aglun a Gymraeg mewn y Gwasnaeth Ie'r Cael Bod a Stadegol yna wedi methu yn ei geiriau hi mae wedi bwydychu a glywed chi, mae'n dwi'n gwneud or glywed fai for the other dear than all shocked to hear some of the heartrending experiences of Welsh people because she suggests very strongly that the Welsh government should lead and plan a Welsh bilingual workforce for the health service in Wales in collaboration with education providers and health bodies will the government respond positively to that recommendation? The report was published today and we will consider it in detail as well as we do in the EU. Keith Davis. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I've just read a summary of the Welsh Language Commission's report, and it reminds me of one thing particularly. Following the growth of flying starts areas, or given that growth, the First Minister agreed with me that it's important to ensure that there are enough health visitors available that are fluent Welsh speakers to work with families where Welsh is the, is the, the language spoken at home and the young children perhaps don't speak much English. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Keith Davis, 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 Keith Dav
Now, normally that would be far too small to have a, a proper um, idea. A thousand is the minimum normally for any opinion poll, as we all know in this uh, in this chamber. So. We will, of course, consider the results uh, in terms of their implications, but I'm not convinced that the sample size was big enough to give us a proper picture. Uh, accepting that, uh, First Minister, it is a rise, though. Uh, it shows a, a, a rise of 14 percentage points since 2000, uh, based on figures from the British, as I say, the British Social Attitude Survey. It, it's a worrying factor, uh, which I hope you will agree. Um, what, what action can your government now take, do you think, to tackle this growing prejudice here in Wales? We have uh, supported, of course, uh, many organisations uh, who seek to uh, reduce or eliminate uh, any kind of prejudice, whether it's racial prejudice, whether it's uh, prejudice in terms of, of religion. Uh, I have taken a role, for example, in the Faith, Faith Communities Forum, uh, and that forum has played uh, an enormous role uh, in terms of encouraging interfaith working. It also played a very important role at the time of the riots in England and the work that was done in order to avoid the same situation happening in, in Wales. Uh, sometimes I think we, we can mislead ourselves into thinking that we are in some way more free of racism than other countries. That clearly isn't the case, and we, we must guard against that uh, at all times. And remind people, ultimately, of course, that um, <laughs> it's an obvious thing to say, that people should be judged, as Martin Luther King put it, by the content of their character, not by the colour of their skin. It is nevertheless disappointing to see the figures that we saw a few weeks ago. Uh, despite the flaws that, that may be there in terms of the methodology. Lindsay Whittle. But I would, uh, first of all, I accept everything you say. It is a small sample, but uh, I think it is a worrying trend, um, those people identifying as being racially prejudiced towards uh, other people, and I think we, we really do need to take this seriously, uh, especially when you consider that Wales is perhaps one of the most r racially homogenous uh, uh, parts of the UK. To what extent do you think the media coverage plays a part in this, especially the, some of the right-wing tabloid newspapers which we, uh, we get from, from London, and, and I don't think they really reflect reality of everyday life here in Wales? An, an enormous part. Now, what, what troubles me? is that it's become, it's become almost respectable to express a kind of mild racism, if I can put it that way, in a way that would not have been acceptable 10 years ago. Uh, and that, that does trouble me, because that leads on to, to far worse things. The, it's, it's, it's a problem across Europe. I mean, the irony is, of course, that the, the vote that we saw in the European elections was a reflection of a European trend. Uh, I think it's an issue for all those who are strongly opposed to racism across the whole of this continent. Uh, when countries start to look in on themselves and start looking for others to blame, it's a sure sign that that country is in decline. Uh, and I'm afraid the UK is on the edge of being in that position, as indeed are some other countries in Europe as well. And that's something I greatly regret. Question 11, Antoinette Sandwich. Presiding officer, will the First Minister outline the Welsh Government's plans to improve the teaching of STEM subjects? Yes, it's an important priority for us. We are committed, of course, to supporting teachers of STEM subjects across Wales through new approaches to professional uh, development and, of course, through schemes such as uh, ESW. Uh, much work is being done in order to uh, engage the interest of young people in studying STEM subjects uh, beyond uh, Key Stage 3 and then beyond that university. Well, I'm glad you mentioned young people in that answer, First Minister, because in evidence given to the Enterprise and Business Committee during the spring, the CITB Cymru, Cymru said uh, uh, primary schools are unaccountable and not subject to the same scrutiny with regard to STEM subjects. Now, Engineering Education Wales has a very good F1 scheme that goes into primary schools. What are you doing to encourage primary schools to take advantage of that scheme and particularly to involve girls across Wales? Very much uh, agree. The F1 challenge is exceptionally important. The work that's been done in the, uh, the comprehensive the sixth form is equally important and the work they've done themselves uh, with regard to getting girls into, into science. I've got to declare an interest here in the fact that my father works for them. So uh, I, have to, I have to declare that. He's a very, very small role, but he's been involved for, for some years, uh, and therefore I can assure the member uh, that the lobbying on behalf of STEM subjects in my family is very strong. Lincoln Andrews. First Minister, can I say as, as a backbencher that I completely support the uh, report of the Task and Finish Group on Computing in the Curriculum, which of course I commissioned when I was the Minister. Does the First Minister agree with me? It is particularly stupid for leaders of opposition parties to make pronouncements on the primary school curriculum 
when they clearly don't have a clue of what is already feasible within it. And would you please congratulate Conclidoc Primary School in my own constituency, which is pioneering the teaching of coding to children from year two and upwards, and indeed is building uh, latent uh, construction and engineering skills uh, based on uh, methodologies such as 3D printing. I would very much uh, congratulate Come to that School and the work that, uh, that they are, are doing, uh, and of course delighted to hear of, course, of the uh, strong support uh, that my uh, friend and colleague has given to uh, ICT both now uh, in the past and indeed in the future. Question 12, William Graham. Officer, will the First Minister make a statement on critical care bed capacity in South Wales East Hospitals? Yes, our delivery plan for the critically ill sets out our expectations for the NHS in Wales. We'll be publishing our first annual report on progress and a capacity review on the 22nd of July. Uh, thank you very much for your answer, Minister. You will know that there remain issues concerning the impact of delayed transfers from care in, this, in South Wales, South Wales East particularly. Uh, what steps do you take to address this matter? And what time scale do you envisage? Well, of course, we know that delayed transfers of care are reducing in Wales. It's also the case, of course, that uh, the number of beds per patient in Wales is, for example, higher than it is in England. And we expect that good progress in terms of delayed transfers of care to continue. Thank you, First Minister. <coughs> Item two.